Welcome to Havana. We are here for a crazy but wonderful project called Mozart y Mambo. Imagine my surprise to find this statue of Mozart in the middle of Havana on my very first trip here. My Cuban friends say that Mozart would have been a perfect Cuban because of his melodies, his rhythms, and his love for life. And this is one of the things that inspired me to come up with the idea for this wonderful new project. I love Mozart, and as a horn player, it's been my dream to record the Mozart horn concertos. Here in Havana, I found the perfect partners to do that with. Pepe Mendes and his Havana Lyceum Orchestra are absolutely wonderful. They're like my family. But for the real Cuban feel, we needed the help of some Cuban popular musicians. And I'm so lucky to have found the best of the best to work with me on this. We have Harald Madrigal, a fantastic trumpet player who doubles as principal trumpet in the orchestra and then gets up and plays amazing trumpet solos in the two Cuban songs. We have Juniet Lombida, an incredibly charismatic saxophone player who is the leader of our newly founded salsa band, the Sarabanda. And we have Jorge Aragon playing the piano in his own two arrangements of Dos Cardenas Para Ti and El Manicero. On this album, you'll be hearing pure Mozart, of course. I'm a horn player, I love to play Mozart. But because we're in Cuba and I love Cuban music so much, we are mixing Cuban rhythms with Mozart. Mozart y Mambo. We have a rondo a la mambo, a serenade mambo, que rico el mambo, and also two Cuban songs. I need to introduce you to two amazing guys. Christoph has done all my CDs and the, the, the Berlin Philharmonic CDs. He does all the Berlin Philharmonic recordings. And Wolfgang doesn't only know about classical music, he knows about popular music as well. Christoph Franke is not just responsible for the sound, he's responsible for the psychological state of mind of the musician doing the music. He knows me so well, he, he knows exactly when to encourage, when to criticize, and he's got an amazing ear for horns. A little bit of my side, I'm excited. <laughs> the sale of the album, we are hoping then to raise money to buy instruments for my Cuban musician friends because they play incredibly well, but their instruments are pretty awful. I think it sounds great. Um, no part yet. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> we had a bit of a problem with the, with the acoustics. Yeah. Oh, really? Yes. Okay. But now with the rebalancing and now we like it a lot. And I really like the sound of the horn so much because really? It's, it's really so... It should sing and, over the yeah. rooftops of yeah. Havana. You know? And, and, and <laughs> um, I mean, I, I want to know what you think. When I first came here, I was so touched by the musicality of these, these musicians and also how much they love what they do. The Cubans have a lot of things to worry about in their daily lives, but when they play music, you, would, you, you wouldn't realize that. They seem like they have not a care in the world. It's wonderful to play this music, it's wonderful for me to play Mozart and to play Cuban music, but it's a shared project. It's, it's not about me, it's about us. It's about this group of people who I am playing with and how we are all learning from each other and having basically the most wonderful time with Mozart and Mambo. Mozart. 